Clotilde, thank you so much for joining us today uh, to share your thoughts and vision. You are the deputy CEO of Group Renault, the CFO of the group, the chairwoman of the board of directors of the RCI Bank, a member of Group Renault Executive Committee, and since the beginning of 2021, the CEO of Mobilize. I'm sure that sleep is overrated for you and no doubt that you deserve being elected as Femme de l'année 2020 by WAVE, which is Women and Vehicles in Europe. How are you today? Um, very well, thank you. On this morning, morning in Paris, um, would love to be with you in Israel, but it's unfortunately not possible due to the circumstances, but I'm very well. Well, soon again, I hope uh, 2022 I hope will probably be in person all together here in Maine, Tel Aviv. So we'd love to have you with us. Um, so I'll get right down to it. Um, OEMs, they used to develop everything in-house in full discretion behind very high walls um, until they were ready to launch the new model. Here you come out with this new brand, Mobilize, and your message is very clear that what this brand is going to develop in the terms of mobility and energy is going to be created by an open ecosystem of collaborations. Could you explain a little bit more about why this is happening now? What are the advantages and challenges of this new visions and synergies? And what are you going to keep in-house as products? Oh, okay, thanks. Well, I think, you know, the automotive industry um, is getting more and more complex. Um, a car now is not just an engine and wheels, if I may, but the part which is linked to uh, software technology is getting more and more important. And either you choose to do, to do everything internally, and that's what we have done in the past and other OEM have done in the past, and we see that now delivering the cars with the right level of quality of the software which is inside the car is more and more complex. So either you hire tens of thousands of, of software engineers in your, in your company, which some have decided to do, either you decide to partner with tech companies and do it all together. And you've seen that we recently announced uh, for Renault the Software République, where Renault has um, joined with tech companies such as Thales, Dassault System, uh, Atos, uh, Orange, or ST Microelectronics in order to develop this ecosystem. And most of their work, by the way, is going to be to build the enabler that Mobilize is going to need in order to build the mobility of tomorrow. So that's where, for Mobilize, we said we don't want to do everything alone. Why? Because first, it would take too long. We would be too late on the market. And second, we don't masterize everything. We need, we need partners. What type of partners do we need? We need a bank. We already have it. This one, we don't need to partner. We have RCI Bank, which, which I have the honor to chair. Um, we need to start to chair to, to partner with startups. We already have some startups through Alliance Venture or through Renault Venture Capital Funds, where we are working and, and doing things. Oh, we have startups which we acquired in the past, more technobric like IKB or Caru or, or co company like that, which are giving us the technobric. We also have a startup in the uh, car sharing, which is called Ziti, which is currently in, in Renault or Madrid. But we and, and we also had another way of looking at partners and ecosystem. We think that if we work in the mobility field alone with just the view of an OEM, we missed the point. So we have to partner with other mobility players. And we announced last week that we are going to, to give you an example in Paris to start with. We're in Paris, so it's the easiest to start with, but we intend to do it in other places of the world. We uh, partner with other mobility uh, provider, namely um, uh, Uber that everybody knows. Uh, Blablacar, which you may know in Israel, which is a peer-to-peer -peer car sharing organization, which is huge and very, very developed, not only in France, but in other places of the world. And for Paris, we decided to partner with RATP, which is a public transportation. Why did we decide to do this type of ecosystem and working together? It's for the same reason. If you think alone, you're not, you think you bring a solution, but in many cases, you add a problem to the problem. 
Whereas if you work together with other mobility providers and start to work with cities, authorities, you are able to provide better solution that will help reduce pollution, reduce congestion, and, and provide mobility where it's needed and when it's needed. Obviously, shared mobility, obviously electric motion, EVs, is the, is, the, is, the, is the name of the game. And we want with our partners to try to find a way to reduce what I said, pollution, congestion, usage of the field, you know, trying to diminish the place an, uh, uh, an automotive take on, on, uh, in the city. So various areas where we think that the ecosystem is needed, the software which is going to go in the car, which is extremely important. We have Software Republic, we have startups. Various startups in the areas of mobility, which we already have, and we're looking for other startups to work with, but also not working alone, working with partners, other mobility partners, and working with cities and authorities. I think it's very important instead of fighting against each other, like it is sometimes the case when you're an OEM, sometimes it sees you as, as the problem, whereas as seeing you as a potential solution. And that's the approach you want to take. That's a beautiful approach. It's really music to my ears because bringing everyone together, when everyone puts something together on the table, together it's always bigger and better. And you mentioned the Alliance, which has been here since 2018. The Tel Aviv Innovation Lab has been operating in Israel. Um, how has it contributed to the group's innovation? Can you provide some and get examples there of things that came out from this lab? Well, yeah, sure, obviously. Actually, I visited Tel Aviv just at the beginning before this innovation lab was built. It was a few months before, and I met the, the person who was going to be in charge uh, in 2017, just before the, the lab was built in. Yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's an extension of the alliance. It's representing Renault Nissan and Mitsubishi in Tel Aviv since 2018, as you mentioned. And it's really trying to understand what can come up of the uh, Israeli automotive startups ecosystem and what we can do to, uh, to, to do. I think Israel is very much in advance in this field, in many fields actually that do interest automotive, not only mobility per se, but really automotive. We know, you know that you're very, very good in terms of cyber security, which is extremely important for our cars, especially the more technical they come, the more easy they may get to, ha to be hacked. So we need to be extremely strong in terms of cybersecurity. You're very strong in terms of vision sensors. You're very strong into AI, obviously, data, and everything which is linked to EV. So we have been in contact with more than 500 startups since 2018, and we have more, run more than 30 collaborative projects and POCs in the, in the, in the last years with Israeli startups. So very happy with the way it is working. I can give you a few names of, of the POCs which we have been doing in the last years. Amazing. The one with ERP, IRP systems, which develops more performant engines and, and controllers for the cars. Another one, which is Apollo Power, which develops innovative lightweight solar roofs. Very nice on our cars. And another one, which is called Cardom, which is a new voice enhancement and separation technology. So three ones which are extremely emblematic for us. Um, we also have, as I said earlier, worked a lot with Alliance Venture. Thanks to the lab, we have identified uh, startups in which we wanted to invest or funds in which we wanted to invest in. And we have, through Alliance Venture, invested in, uh, in many mobility funds, which we have a lot of contact with regularly, and directly in two startups, one called Upstream Security, again, discussing about security as I did before, and Notonomo, which is in the field of the data. So I strongly suggest you to also look in the mobility services place and the electrification space. We have a lot of startups also in those areas. So I'm sure with the future of Mobilize and when you're taking it, you will find more relevant technologies, but it's amazing to see all this activity going on here already in Israel. Um, so when looking at the future, how do you see the role of this uh, lab in Tel Aviv when developing your mobilized ecosystem? What are the opportunities to Ecomotion startups and technology companies that will come? 
Well, I think indeed there is a lot of uh, a lot of things to be done with Israeli uh, startups in the field of mobility, pure mobility, like Mobilize uh, would like to, uh, to to develop. Um, you have very good example of what Israeli startups can do with Waze, with Move It, with Get Taxi. Actually, I did meet back in 2017 when I came to Tel Aviv, the founder of Waze. It was a very inspiring um, uh, discussion that we had. I had decided to come to Tel Aviv to do a, a learning expedition with my team as a CFO at the time. And, and I would like, as soon as it opens, to come back with my mobilized management team because there are many people we can do things with. Actually, we did have a lot of discussion already through Visio, obviously, with some Israeli startups. Because as you, as you mentioned, there's many, many things that can be done. And I like the way it is approached by the, uh, by the startups. So... Uh, we are specifically interesting uh, on cooperation with uh, with different startups developing. For example, we are currently discussion with Moodify on the scent you have in the cars, which is very important in terms of having people happy to come and share cars. We, in Paris, long time ago, we had some very bad experience with car sharing. Cars were dirty. They were, you know, they need to be refurbished, and we're very putting a lot of attention of the, uh, the health uh, of, of our cars, uh, whether the scent, but also everything which is antiviral. And on the interviral, we're also working with uh, uh, Israeli startups. Actually, quite a few of them did participate to a hackathon that we did make with Renault to try to find the best uh, technical solution in order to make sure that when people go in the car, not only it smells good, but it's safe. So there is a lot of things that we're doing on that, and we're having pilot with some Israeli startup at the moment. Uh, on the rest, we are looking at what type of sharing and services we can develop in Tel Aviv, for example. Uh, I have had some discussion with, with some of your people in, in ministry a few weeks ago to see how we can come to Tel Aviv, either with cars for car sharing, or we also have cars which would be very well and purpose designed cars for ride hailing. Uh, taxi, uh, and, and we're looking into uh, what we can do when these cars are going to be available. The one for car sharings are already available, so we're looking into it. The one for ride hailing should be able to come 2022 or 2023. Um, could you please share what will be the percentage of uh, revenue from services of the group versus ownership and sales of new vehicles? And if you can divide that into like how you see it in five years, in 10 years, and in 30 years, how will be that percentage? Well, what we announced on January 14th when we uh, presented the Renolution plan, the new plan from Renault uh, starting from now till 2025 or 2030, we said that Mobilize goal is to represent between 20 and 30% of or no total turnover. But that encompasses all type of services, from mobility services, finance services with the bank, uh, energy services, recycling, data services, everything. So it's quite a huge ambition. And look at the Mayo, our, our CEO, uh, often reminds me that when he said, 20 is not enough, 30 should be the game. And it shows you how serious we are about that, how, how serious we are about the need to transform a traditional OEM, which is 120 years old, to a, a tech company, because we strongly believe the shift in the, in the usage model is happening and will take more and more the place. Um, I think it's quite, I, I'm not going to give you 2025 because I don't know it. And that's the good thing is, we don't have a precise roadmap because we're still on a test and learn basis. We know a lot of things have happening and they're changing very rapidly, but they're different from one city to the next. We always, when we think mobility, we often think about cities in, in, in big countries, but the needs are different if you look at smaller cities or if you look at rural areas. And we also want to think about the people who are living in rural areas, how to help them get this mobility when you know that the price of owning a car is getting more and more expensive because of all the regulation you have to put in it. A, 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 an EV car today is a lot more expensive than a, a normal ICE car. A hybrid car is a lot more expensive. 
So people are going to have more and more difficulties to shift to the new technology, which will push for a different type of usage, again, using shared mobility. And that's what we want to do. So I don't have a precise roadmap. We're testing a lot of things. We want to do it startup mode, which is difficult when you're in a group which is 120 years old. Uh, but that the good thing is that the CEO and myself are convinced, supported by the board, that is the road to be taken. I totally respect that. You need to start doing and then you can go quickly and learn more as you go. Um, you spoke about electric vehicles, but there's an yeah. issue that's still there and that's the battery lifetime value management. Um, are the Alliance's member companies ready to take back the used batteries from the garages and repurpose them? How is this done? Is this done already today? What will be their second and third life? Or um, do you even believe in this new concept of lifetime battery insurance? Because this is something I've been hearing and I wanted to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, well, the good thing is compared to everybody else on the planet, we have the most longest experience in terms of EV with the Alliance. Renault and Nissan have been the, the, you know, the, the pioneer, if I may, in EV mobility. Uh, Renault, we launched our first EV cars almost 10 years ago now, and we have learned a lot. And what we have learned is, is, is battery lasts a lot longer than what we had feared. And actually, we, you know, we are only seeing the first battery come back 10 years after. So they have a long live time. And, and what we do now is we're, we're really uh, understanding that even at the end of the life of what we could call a, a battery, which is good enough for EV mobility, you can use it for many other things. And we have already developed quite a lot of experience in terms of second life of the battery, where we use the battery, we, re, we, we, we get back from the cars for, uh, storage, fixed storage, and we are using that to generate um, electricity power for plants, for boats. We have a boat, the Black Swine, which is on the Seine in Paris, which is, uh, which is powered by second life battery. In some of our plants, in Douai, in Flin, we are a second life battery in a stationary stage, you know, uh, being used in order to, um, to, uh, to help power the plants. We also have some experience, which we call the smart islands, which would become, could become the smart cities, where we provide second life battery in order to uh, help uh, areas, islands, to be fully autonomous. We have one in, in Porto Santos in Madeira. And the idea is that in 10 years, they would be fully autonomous in terms of energy using EV cars, obviously, but also using second life of battery to generate electricity. And I think that is the future. Very interesting where you could be self-autonomous in terms of battery, in terms of electricity consumption and usage and creation at, at the end of the day in, in your area. So that's what we're doing. And when the battery is not, is not effective anymore, even in the second life, we know how to recycle. And that people often don't know that. They always think, oh, EV, it's dirty, you know, and, and because we don't know how to recycle battery. It's not true. We know how to recycle battery. Up to 95% of the battery can be recycled. And then you can re-extract the material, which is quite expensive, to, to do some other uh, new batteries. So it's, it's very interesting. And to come back at the end of your question about lifetime insurance, actually, we want to get back this battery you know, in order to recycle them and to do you know, second life of battery. And when we launched Zoe, which you know, it's our emblematic car, we launched it in a very specific scheme where actually people were buying the car and we were leasing the battery in order to uh, remove the anxiety about the duration of the battery. So we launched it that way, which means that for most of the Zoe, which are currently on the road, and it's a few hundred thousand of them, we own the battery. RCI Bank it owns the battery. And we know, again, we're going to recoup them and then uh, recycle them. We are stopping this type of scheme, though, because for the people, when they want to sell their cars, they discover that they can sell their car, but they can't sell the battery that goes with it. And it's a hassle. So they're asking us to go back to either full leasing or uh, full purchase, which we will do. But we intend to nevertheless keep the link with the battery, 
helping them to understand what is the state of health of their battery and recoup them in order to recycle them at the end of the day. So we really would like to see the full loop of the battery life cycle. It's super important looking at the full loop. And um, I think you cannot say mobility today without saying energy nowadays. Um, and that shows very strongly in your brand messaging. I was wondering, in your opinion, what are still the challenges in EV services? Uh, services sorry, And if you could have one wish, okay, and find a startup that would approach you and say, I have the perfect solution for, what would it be? Well, I think the first, the biggest challenge today is charging station. And firstly, I'm not sure startups can help on that one. Um, a star charging station, people are still afraid of being able to charge their EV car on the road whenever they need. So currently, most of the EV cars, especially our cell phone ones, are more for the city. And in the city, most people charge either at home or at work. So that's fine. But whenever they want to get out of the city and be able to charge fast on the freeway, that's where the difficulty starts. So we're in discussion with a lot of companies and, and authorities and, and energy providers in order to remove that roadblock. But going back to startups where they can help, I think, is to help us really uh, uh, find the technology of ultra fast charging without damaging the battery. That's something Everything which is linked to the charging thing, either from the car to the uh, to the uh, charging station or any other way of charging, recharging the battery, is an area where startups could could be extremely helpful. Trying to think differently than how OEMs think, how energy provider thinks, finding the secret recipe where charging would be fast without damaging the battery anywhere, anytime. Well, I promise to ideas. send you a list of recommended startups for that and to, you can uh, see if you find anything there. We're out of time, but I don't want to miss this question. So in one sentence, you signed a petition for inclusivity and growth of percentage of women in the group. I founded Women in Mobility for exactly that, to grow the number of women in the field and to give them tools in order to grow themselves. So what do you think that can be done that will have the biggest impact on the number of women in the field of mobility today? Well, if you look at the field of mobility uh, uh, broadly, it's complicated because the, uh, uh, the problems start from the bottom, from the beginning. You have very little people, women, in engineer school. And you know that when you want to go and work for an OEM, you, you often have to have some technical knowledge. The good thing with shifting to mobility, in my view, removes this roadblock of the pool of people who could be attracted. I think what, what to do it to, to attract women is just to show good example of how fun it is to work in mobility, despite all the, uh, the common thinking or perception that it's a man's world. It's, it also is a woman's word for two reasons. First, when you want to buy a car, 80% of the, of, the, of the car decision is made by women. 80% of the time, it's a decision by a woman. And in the mobility field, you don't need to know what a car is. You don't, you don't have to think about it. Just look at the usage. And I think women are very good into defining what is the most pragmatic usage that you want to have with something rather than the technical background which is needed to do so. So in my view, it's just, just that way, making sure that people understand how fun it is to work in this industry. I couldn't agree more, and I had a lot of fun with you today. I thank you so much for your words and pearls, and I really hope that to see you soon in Tel Aviv. Thank you very much. I I'm, I'm, would be very really deli delighted to come in Tel Aviv and, and potentially another year for EcoMotion physically. Likewise, thank you. Thank you very much.